to give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to run a hook lift truck. The first part we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to take this can and set it on the ground to simulate if you're delivering an empty can to a client. After that, I'll show you how to pick it up, reload it, and then after that, I'm gonna show you how we dump it when we get to a recycle or transfer station. So the first part is delivering an empty can to a job site for your customer. Let's get started. Step one, engage your PTO. On this truck, I have the PTO wired up to auxiliary one. It's engaged and you'll see a PTO light come on. Step two, this is electric controller from Palfinger. We're gonna push this upper square. That's gonna power it on. The green light's gonna let you know that your system is ready. Step three, we're gonna take this button right here, which is the slide or jib, and we're gonna jib it back. The next step is we're gonna take and we're gonna lift the can up into the rollback position. We're gonna set it on the ground with this one move. Guys, there's two things you can do with this. I'm gonna get the dumpster, just the wheel sitting on the ground, and then I'm gonna give you two options after that that you can do it. Once the box is on the ground and the wheels are on the ground, you have two choices here. You can pull the truck out from underneath the box, which is my preference, or you can hold the, part, the truck with your foot on the brake or in park, and you can push the cam back. There are special circumstances where you want the truck not to move and to push the cam back, and there's other times you wanna pull the truck out from underneath it. So just depending on that situation, you have both those options. I'm gonna show you what both those look like, starting with the truck pulling out from underneath the can. That's what it looks like to have the dumpster stay stationary and roll the truck out from underneath it. A couple reasons you may wanna do that is if you back the dumpster up close to a garage door, you're not gonna have the ability to move past it. Also, it is easier on your customer's driveway and the equipment if the dumpster stays still and then you move the truck out from underneath it. As you saw in that portion of the video, those wheels don't move at all. You hold it perfectly still, pull the truck out. I'm gonna reset it. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when the truck stays still and the dumpster rolls away and pushes away from the truck. So that's where you push the dumpster back. A couple of situations you may wanna do that into, let's say that you're pushing the dumpster underneath a carport, or you're pushing it into a garage, or your truck is right on the curb in live traffic and you don't have the option to go out into live traffic. All sorts of situations that you can determine if you wanna push the dumpster or you wanna roll the truck out. All right guys, in this portion of the video, I'm gonna go over how we pick up an empty dumpster or a loaded dumpster for that matter. Doesn't really matter, this is just the pickup portion of it. Guys, just for reference, this is a 54 inch hook height. Uh, all my cans are 54. They do come in 36 inch height, 54 or 62. Uh, again, all mine are 54. This gives you a point of reference. I'm gonna show you how we hook that up. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this hook and we're gonna guide it back into it. Guys, this is not an area you wanna slam into. What you wanna do is you wanna drop this part just underneath the hook till you can grab it. This upper part keeps it so that it keeps it locked in. I'm gonna show you how this works kind of in a slow motion detail for those of you that aren't familiar with it. So once you hook this dumpster up, 
it's locked in on here. You can see that the dumpster is up off the ground. The rails are off the ground. This particular can that we have has front casters on it, but it's up off. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna pick it up onto the truck. And I'm gonna show you a couple things that you, that you really need to watch out for, uh, especially if you're not super familiar with hook trucks, I'm gonna show you the proper way to do it. And then I'm gonna show you something to watch out for that'll keep you out of a lot of trouble. All right, guys. So what I was talking about, you can see the rail is inside that lip and it rides on that roller. Hey guys, little pro tip for you. Have you guys ever wondered why Pal Finger paints these yellow? It's for high visibility. We do the same thing. Yeah, it just happens to be our company colors, but I can look out the window, whether it's night, whether it's inclement weather. Obviously you can see by the equipment, we've just been pounded by snow the last couple of days. This just is an extra, an extra level of safety that you can get a visual on it. So if you look at this, both those rails are inside. You need them inside these rails to properly pick up. If you come look right here, you can see that both sides are riding inside those rails. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when they don't ride inside those rails. And I'm gonna save you guys a bunch of damage and a bunch of headache. This is probably the most crucial part in the exchange of the dumpster and the truck, whether it's coming on or off, this single thing right here, you always have to double check and just make sure of. Here we go. Okay guys, with all the benefits of a hook truck, there is one time you still need to be pretty relatively straight and that's on the pickup. So if you're picking this can up and you're pulling it out of a parking structure, look at this previous video here to reference what I'm talking about. You can pull these things out and not have to be straight. It is one of the best benefits of the truck, but you gotta get straight before you pull it on the truck. Otherwise, this is what happens. You can see that this rail is outside that lip. If I continue to pick this up, this rail is gonna do two things. It's gonna land on my hot bar tab. I'll go over these in a minute. And then that rail is gonna drop down on a bumper, a fender. It's gonna do pretty major damage and it's gonna get stuck on your truck, okay? So when you're picking, this is why we tell our guys, no cell phones, no distractions, nothing. Run your cycle, be focused. This right here, is not a good pick, but this is super easy to fix. I'm gonna show you how to fix this in less than five seconds. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the truck and I'm gonna take the truck that way. That's gonna bring my back end over and it's gonna pull that roller underneath that rail. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how easy that was to do? So rather than having to reset your can, pull off it, move forward, all you have to do is take your truck, move it the opposite direction. That brings your back end over and puts it underneath that rail. There's two things on this truck that not all trucks have or they have different versions. This is a hot bar lock, okay? What it does, and I'm gonna show you when I get the can down, is it's going to allow a hot bar to slide underneath it. This is what secures the can down from bouncing off the rails when you go down the road. Some guys have straps, some guys have hot bar locks, some guys have this. This is known as a pistol grip. And depending on your dumpster, this is how you might lock them in. Uh, none of my cans use pistol grips 
but these are welded to the subframe. They don't affect any of my cans, so I've chosen to leave them on. Maybe if I resell the truck, somebody's gonna be looking for pistol grips. I didn't want to change the integrity of the subframe from Powell Finger, how they designed it, so I've left them on. But these are non-functional on my truck, but if you see a truck with those, they're pistol grips. And the way it works is the dumpster has a bar welded underneath it that locks underneath here and rides right here. So what happens is you go down the road, you jib forward and that bar holds it in place so it can't jump the rails. This does the same thing, it's just a different style. So now it's riding on the rails. So now we can continue our pickup. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this, we're gonna bring it all the way down. It's gonna ride on this support and it's gonna catch and ride on this support. That's what these supports are. This truck has three. It has a rear, it has a mid, and it has a front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now bring that dumpster all the way down to sit on the rear and the mid. Once it's down, we'll slide it forward to catch on the front. Here we go. Not the quietest thing in the world. Uh, part of that is due to all the new paint and everything on it, but that's how it is. So now if you look at it, it's in the transport position. It's forward, it's riding on the front, it's riding on the mid, it's riding on the rear, and the hot bar is locked in. So I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna show you this hot bar and I'm gonna explain this to you one more time because this is the mechanical locking mechanism that keeps the dumpster from running off the rails or bouncing off the rails. So guys, now we've covered delivering an empty dumpster, how to cycle it off the truck and get it off, We've covered picking that same dumpster up and putting it on the truck. There's only one step left. That's when you get to the recycle center, the transfer station, the landfill, uh, whether you're delivering material. How do you make this dump and how does this system know it's dumping and not rolling off? The roll off is the delivery and the pickup, putting the can actually on the ground. The dumping is just that. It's keeping the can on the truck, but dumping. How does this system know that? I'm gonna show you how. How the system knows if it's dumping or if it's rolling off, when you jib the system back, there's a mechanism at the very back of the jib. And when you jib it back, that unlocks part of the dump system. That's what allows the system and tells the system we're rolling back. If you don't jib back, it just dumps like a normal dump trailer or dump truck. I'm gonna show you how that works. It's real simple. You use the same controller. You don't do anything different here. You raise it up and it's in the dump position. Guys, a couple, a couple of things I'll point out on this. Even though it's in the dump position, those hot bars still lock it in in the back. The hoist still work the same. We're just changing the angle and we're telling it that we're dumping. One cool thing about pal finger that you can do is even with it in the air like this, I can jib it back or forward and change the angle of the can. I'll tell you why you want to do that. One of the many features I really like about pal finger is if you guys notice how steep that dump angle is, this angle right here, this will really clean out, really clean out your dumpsters. So I like what an aggressive angle I can get on it. Now you dump your load, you bring it back down. Final step in this, we're gonna take our controller, we're gonna hit the stop, kill the power to it, and then this is the most important part. We're gonna disengage, we're gonna disengage the PTO. Light goes off, 
PCOs off. Hey guys, I'm gonna give you a pro tip. For those of you guys that haven't built your hook lift trucks yet, I would highly recommend an electrical one like this for a couple reasons. One, if you guys notice, some of these things that I was doing, I was standing outside the truck watching the operation running it like this. When you have the hand controls or the cable driven mounted in your center console, you cannot be outside your truck. I have one truck with them inside and you're limited inside the truck. So I added hand controls outside the truck on that particular truck. I like to be right here. I like to see what's happening. I want to be able to walk around it quickly and easily grab my hand controls and run it. So for those of you guys that haven't built a truck yet, I would definitely do something more of a remote where you can stand outside the truck and have a clear view of your whole operation. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video I put together today was useful and helpful to you. Guys, don't forget, I'm gonna be at Con Ag in Las Vegas, March 14th through the 18th. Uh, find me, come say hi, message me, uh, send me a DM, whatever you can. I would love to meet up with you guys. I just wanted to give a special thank you to everybody that's gonna be attending my dinner while in Vegas. That booked out crazy fast. I can't believe how much response we got on that. For all you guys that messaged me and I've messaged you back with the details of the date, the time and where it's at, thank you. I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys. Thanks so much for your support on that. Guys, if you would, please like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate all the support. That's the way that we can keep making these videos and creating this content for you guys. Hey, drive safe out there, travel light guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.